You know, I really like tea. So really ever since the beginning of my YouTube channel, I've been playing Saints Row. One of my first ever series was on Saints Row 1, and since then I've played every game, including the Saints Row the Third remaster, and even Agents of Mayhem. So like many Saints Row fans, I was stumped when I heard the rumor about a fifth game being in development, and even the fact that it was a reboot didn't even bother me. Eh, makes sense, they wrote themselves into a corner story-wise. I could see them rebooting the series. Then that CGI tray were dropped. <laughs> oh. no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I don't think that's what anybody had in mind. However, since that time, I've largely come around. And I'm actually of the opinion that New Saints Row could be great. And here's why. So let's start off by addressing the characters. These guys are not at all what the Saints Row cast originally was. Originally, we had people who were either tough gangster types, or at least had the potential to become rough gangster types. These guys seem more like a group of friends that were sitting around trying to think up ways to earn some money because they were broke, and were like, hey, let's get into the criminal business. How hard could it be? In other words, they're totally out of their element. Can we do this? We can't afford not to. However, if done correctly, I feel that this could make a very interesting narrative. What if the new Saints Row had a sort of Breaking Bad-esque story to it? A group of college friends are broke, and they have bills due. So they plan a small, one-time heist on a local payday loan shop. In spite of doing maybe not the greatest job in the world, cause, I don't know, they're college kids, not expert criminals, they pull it off. But then they run right into Yevo Gang here who's getting paid a lot of protection money to make sure that this payday loan shop doesn't get robbed. If you're lucky, the cops will get to you before my people go. So now they've got this enemy gang breathing down their neck for money that they don't have anymore because they spent it. Thus requiring them to dive deeper into the criminal underworld and they slowly learn more things, become better at their craft and eventually find their identity as the Saints. Now see, doesn't that sound like a Saints Row game that you want to play? That was actually my main issue with Agents of Mayhem is that this sort of level of character depth didn't exist. You knew who people were and why they were doing what they were doing, but only on a surface level. You never really got to know anybody personally. And I mean, to be fair, there was tons and tons of different characters that you could play as in that game, which made for some really fun gameplay variety, but didn't do much for character depth. Now I think that if they actually did something similar to this for the new Saints Row, it would be fantastic. But what concerns me is, as RPG gameplay is pointed out, there's only going to be 25 main missions in the game. My main concern is the fact that the game only has 25 main missions in the story. Now of course there'll be plenty of side content and you can still do character building and world building with side content, that's not out of the question. But it's concerning because this is the first time we've ever seen this cast and so you really need a proper mission lineup and a proper story in order to introduce them and like I said do all this world building and stuff. If you don't take the time to do that and you make the game a little bit too short, then how are people actually going to be able to get to know these characters? It's not like in Saints Row 4 where, in spite of all the problems that that game had, even though it was a little bit shorter, it was with a cast that you already knew and had spent time with for several titles beforehand. So you could get away with being a little bit shorter because you didn't have to do so much character and world building because it was a sequel, it wasn't a brand new reboot. So quite frankly, I think the potential is here for this to be good in spite of the character and cast being different, that doesn't really concern me. It's really just a matter of will they actually go through and do the work that they need to do to make it turn out well. And I honestly believe that they will because of what I'm gonna talk about next. The setting and the gameplay. So Santo Alessio looks awesome. I love the desert setting. I love just the aesthetic of what they've got going on with this town, the people in there. 
the various parodies of Southwestern culture, and of course all the little things that you get in Saints Row that make you feel right at home. Everything from the goofy one-liners to the chaotic explosions. I am not the first person to accidentally shoot a friend by dropping a loaded... Yeah, okay, I don't need a gun. A lot of different people had a lot of different ideas for what a new Saints Row game might look like, but I think at its core, most people wanted a game that had a gameplay with some of the more wacky styles of what you saw in Saints Row the Third included, while maintaining a more grounded, more realistic narrative, such as what you saw in Saints Row 2. And this is kind of what the developers said the new Saints Row was going to be like. And from what gameplay we've seen, it very much so seems to stay true to that. Santo Oasio and the gangs and the crimes are seem again like somewhat grounded. It's still about gangs and gang culture, but obviously there's some more wacky stuff in it too, such as the different ways to kill people, the different takedowns, the flying. Okay, maybe some of it is really not that grounded or realistic. But it does seem like they're aware that a balance must be struck, and they're doing what they can to make that balance a reality. Again, it basically boils down to there's a ton of potential here, but what will they do with it? As far as the actual gameplay goes though, what I've seen looks fun and the same sort of stuff you would see in a Saints Row game or would hope to see. The movement and fighting looks good, very reminiscent of the Saints Row the Third remaster and maybe also a little bit of Agents of Mayhem. Most of the gameplay doesn't look like anything super new or innovative, they're not reinventing the wheel. The same sort of gameplay that you've always had from Saints Row games. Although I will say the new Criminal Ventures feature looks pretty cool. Obviously it's probably going to be the kind of stuff that you could get from like Grand Theft Auto Vice City or even Grand Theft Auto 5 where you're, you get a business and you do these asset missions and stuff for it. But still nonetheless could make for some very interesting content. I also want to touch on the big thing, the main selling point of this game that we've seen so far, which is the customization. They clearly went all out for this, right? Like you can design your boss to be whoever you want it to be, and they've even released the Saints Row Boss Factory as like a free download that you can go ahead and get and set it up in advance. That's probably going to be the next thing I personally check out. But even, even besides that, I mean, you take a look at the cars and all the cool little vehicular customizations that you can do with those. Saints Row 2 had really good customization for the time, and this is absolutely no different. This is some of the best customization you can get out there in a video game right now. Now, me personally, I've never been all that big on customization. Like, it's a, it's a feature I use and enjoy, but it's not going to sell the game for me, right? It's just, it quite frankly isn't. However, I will note that if they put this much effort into the customization, it would lead me to believe that that also shows they're going to be putting a lot of effort into the game as a whole. Unless we assume that they're putting all their effort into making the customization great at the expense of other features in the game, such as the gameplay or the story or whatever. Now, I, you could see it either way, and, and quite frankly, I don't, I don't really know which is the case. We won't really know that until it comes out. But I'm more than willing to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. Now, let's talk about lore for a second. All right, I get that this is a reboot, but I still would like to see them show some appreciation towards the actual lore and the history and basically what the, the backstory of the original series is, right? Maybe some subtle Easter eggs somewhere in the game, some sort of callbacks in a conversation or something. Now, there's no indication that this will actually be a thing, but it would be an awesome feature to add in on the West, and it would honestly be a shame, a huge missed opportunity, almost kind of a disservice to long-running fans if they didn't do it. So overall, I think that the new Saints Row actually has a ton of potential to be a really good game, maybe even a great one and also even a really good Saints Row game. It'll be a new direction for the series, there's no getting around that. But I think if they play their cards right and focus on the important stuff, this could be excellent. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be watching this video back in the next three months and be thinking, man, I was way too optimistic. But I guess only time will tell.
One thing's for sure though, I will be streaming this game day one, doing a full 100% walkthrough of it on the channel live. I've already set up the watch page, so I'll link it here at the end of the video. Before I close out though, I wanna briefly go over one more thing. On PC, the game is coming out exclusively the Epic Game Store, and it won't be on Steam. Uh, just like the remaster of Saints Row the Third, it is a one year timed exclusive, and then it'll get a Steam version. This made a lot of PC gamers annoyed because most people prefer to get stuff on Steam, uh, myself included. I will say, I get why Epic Games does this because, well, I mean, you know, in this particular case, for me anyway, it works. I'm getting the game through the Epic Game Store. And I don't care for that store as much. You know, it, it's been slow to adopt a lot of the features that you've seen on Steam, and they seem far less interested on making it a good experience for customers and more interested on just locking games there so that people have really no other choice. Um, regardless though, this will be like the first time I've bought a game on the Epic Games Store since, oh goodness, I think I, when I bought Fortnite Save the World. So, yeah, I'm gonna be getting it on there. If you want to help support the channel, you can use my creator code if you're gonna be getting it as well. It's Kess Gaming. Or, what would be probably a much smarter thing to do is wait until the game comes out, uh, see how it is, and then only buy it if it looks good to you, or maybe wait till it goes on sale. And then there'll be the people who wait a year for it to come out on Steam, because they have more than enough to play in the meantime. And that's certainly fine too. Anyway guys, I'm looking forward to this game. I hope it turns out to be really great. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think the new Saints Row will turn out well and surprise us? Or do you think it's just going to end up being maybe not so good? Let me know what you think. Leave a like in the video if you enjoyed. Thank you all once again for watching. Till next time, I've been your host, Kess Gaming. And I will see you all at the top.